Mr. Paul Barry of Media Watch. Are you suggesting that I can be bought? You are 100% correct. Yeah. You bloody bet I can. You pay our wages. Yes, of course they do. And and listen, the fact that my wife got a new cooktop from Harvey Norman last week oh. and, they, and I got an electric shave has got stuff all to do with the fact that we were yeah. a little bit positive. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And that's Adelaide's Triple M Brecky show having a laugh at us after we pinged them for going soft on network sponsor Harvey Norman, who starred in Choice's Shonky Awards last year. Rue and Ditz, who are athletes turned hosts Mark Rusciuto and Chris Dittmar, serve up three hours of blokey banter every morning. And part of their act involves talkback callers, like this regular correspondent known as Tommy. We've got time for one more call, I reckon. Hello, good morning. Hello, Hello. 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 Yeah, what is this taste Australia? Yeah, tasting Australia. Tell me about that. No one tell Tommy. If you think that's someone pretending to sound like a Chinese restaurateur, then you're right. And last Monday, Tommy called in to chat about a local food festival. So you recently you have the meeting of the culture, so Tommy can get involved with his Chinese food. Yeah. You know, Australian food. We have them together, and that's why you come down, boys, this week, because I have got... Yeah, braised kangaroo and black bean sauce on the menu. Oh, okay. beautiful. Braised kangaroo with black bean sauce. Black bean sauce, yeah. Sounds like a skit from another era, doesn't it? But Roo, Ditz and Tommy barreled on. Uh, one customer said they not like it too much. He find the pouch a bit chewy. The pouch. <laughs> See you, boys. Hey, you can use the pouch for your takeaway pack, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> you come up with too many good ideas, bro boy. So, is Tommy real? No, of course he's not. He's just an offensive racial stereotype played for laughs on multiple occasions. But seems he's made his last call after we raised it with the network. A spokesperson told us... The offending comments were made by a caller to the show who puts on voices and who won't be allowed on the show again. So, bye-bye, Tommy, and hello to an abject apology from Triple M, whose spokesperson told MediaWatch... We are disappointed this content was aired and precautions have been taken to make sure it does not occur again. We sincerely apologise for any offence caused. And quite right too. But it's not the only thing Triple M is sorry for lately. Get a load of this idea from the Danny Lakey Show. Recently we've been thinking, what's missing? We've got the dirty callers. We've got the naughty topics. What do other controversial shows do? Of course! Tonight, the Danny Lakey Show announces the only show on radio to have its very own sex doll. Sex doll, sex doll, the people sex doll. Danny Lakey's evening show, broadcast nationally on Triple M, proudly boasts it is the naughtiest show on FM radio. But one night last month, just before the Brittany Higgins rape story broke, it went a lot further than that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Danny Lakey show presents the people's sex doll. I single-handedly want to break the stigma of owning a sex doll. Why should ladies get all the fun? I am keen to live the silicon dream. And this being a call-in show, why not invite listeners to be part of the fun? I'm looking to form a sex doll committee right now on 13353. And soon Danny was taking male callers through their fantasy preferences as they designed their perfect female form from waist, hips, feet and... Bust, small, medium or bazonka 9000s? Uh, no more than a handful because you no can't do too much once, once you've got a handful. Nah, I want them big, man. Bazonka 9000s, yeah. And it did not end there. Now, wait. Uh, Clayton, what are we, are we talking? Like a light uh, girl, an average girl, or a real heavy mistress? Yeah, you want to be able to throw it across the room. OK, so light, light to average? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Uh, Mick, uh, light, average? Yeah, light. You want to pick her up and slam her against the wall. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, well, I mean, easy. The sex doll has some feelings. Charming stuff. Now, it won't surprise you that some listeners took offence. And as a result, four days later, Danny ditched the crowdsourced sex doll and told listeners... We would wholeheartedly like to apologise for the sex doll segment. We had a little too much fun. We got a little bit too carried away. Some of the comments that were said regarding the sex dolls uh, highly offended some people who were listening. And sometime later, when the segment came to the attention of Radio Today, network head Mike Fitzpatrick also apologised and issued a statement to say... The comments made on the show fell below the standards that we expect of our shows. Adding that Triple M had taken decisive action to remove all offending content and had provided additional training and education for staff. 
But do FM hosts really need to be educated that trivialising violence against women, not to mention objectifying them in this way, is not on? I mean, seriously. Sure, there's nothing wrong with talking sex on the radio, but that was a disgrace. And that brings us to Adelaide and 5AA's Jeremy Cordo's comments on Saturday morning about Brittany Higgins. Miss Higgins, she's been called a lightning rod and she's been, been given an awful lot of power. I just ask myself why the Prime Minister doesn't call it out for what it is. A silly little girl who got drunk. My advice to the Prime Minister would be to stop worrying about offending somebody. Just a silly little girl who got drunk. But that was only the start of it. Because the 75-year-old radio star also had some advice about what to do with a woman whose story of rape in Parliament House has galvanised a national movement. Why are we going through these machinations about this young woman? She should have her bottom smacked. Why in God's name would she go out and get herself in that kind of compromising situation when she worked for the Minister for Defence of the Commonwealth of Australia? And who said the dinosaurs were dead? Like him or loathe him, Cordo is a radio legend who's been in the business almost six decades since starting as an errand boy for John Laws at the age of 16. Famously outed in 1999 for taking cash for comment from Adelaide Casino and Optus, for which he showed no remorse, Cordo was nevertheless inducted in 2015 into the Commercial Radio Hall of Fame. But by this morning, he was gone, with 5AA's David Pemberthy apologising to Brittany Higgins and reading out this statement from the radio station on air. We acknowledge that the comments were completely inappropriate and offensive. The views expressed by Mr Cordo do not reflect those held by 5AA and Nova Entertainment, and we unequivocally withdraw them. Mr Cordo's employment has been terminated. It's been a crazy week, hasn't it? And we haven't even mentioned a certain Queensland MP, Andrew Lamming, whose career was also brought to an abrupt end last week after a series of reports on Nine News Queensland, including claims he used his phone to take a photograph up a woman's skirt. The photo was really inappropriate, I'd, especially um, when I was bent over. According to witnesses, Lamming reached around the counter to take the snap. Sean Blinko was working at the time. My manager at the time saw him do it and forced Andrew Lamming to delete the photo off his phone. Great work from Nine's Peter Fegan, revealing what some people have clearly known about for a very long time. But now let's carry on with the theme of men behaving badly towards women, but with a slightly different twist in the tale and go to a current affair which recently brought us this important message on domestic violence. Next, the police experiment that'll have you wondering what you would have done. We were surprised that no one did call. Late last year, the police conducted a so-called social experiment on the New South Wales Central Coast as part of a laudable campaign to tackle domestic violence. 7pm at a home in Wyom on the New South Wales Central Coast and the sounds of domestic violence ring out. Why don't you do something useful for a change? I go through a This is all on you. You started this. You did nothing except disrespect It is a big issue for the Central Coast, which ranks second in New South Wales for domestic violence rates, and it supposedly revealed a shocking fact that many Australians who witness a domestic violence incident do not call the police. They're not real, but the reaction, or lack thereof, is. Did anyone knock on the door or call police when the noises were being played at that house? No one called the police. And police were adamant that neighbours and passers-by could have picked up the phone. It was a time of evening where we would expect people to be home, generally speaking, and, and in the park across the road, and maybe walking up and down the street. Yeah, we, we were surprised in some ways to find that no one did call. And ACA rounded off its report with criticism from a fellow resident. Are you disappointed to hear that other people in the community just ignored it? Yes. I mean, they shouldn't. You know, everyone should be responsible um, and look out for other women. All in all, the public did not come out looking good. But the programme left out some crucial details that we can now reveal. First, the local council warned neighbours a few weeks before the experiment that police would be at the house that night and there would be disturbance. One neighbour told us... We received a letter stating that the police would be using the house on that night to film a domestic violence ad and that there would be yelling and noise coming from the house. And the local council confirmed last week to Media Watch... 
The immediate residents were advised in advance that there would be filming. So it's hardly a surprise that people did not call the police if they'd been told it was a scripted drama. But secondly, and even more importantly, we're told the police had a marked patrol car outside the house on the night. And as our neighbour asked... Why would we call police if we heard anything when police were clearly already there? It is a good point. And he added... As someone who has actually called police in the past when a violent situation had been occurring, I find the imputation that I would not do everything in my power to stop any violent situation, domestic or otherwise, and alert appropriate authorities. Completely offensive and the record needs to be corrected. So, what do the police have to say about this? A spokesperson told Media Watch that only three neighbours were warned about the experiment and that... There were potential opportunities for community members that were nearby or not informed of the situation to be in a position to report. But another neighbour who watched the filming from outside the house told us that bystanders would not have intervened because... Everyone knew what was going on. Around 14 film crew were standing outside the house. There were cameras there and there was one police car with two police officers. As far as social experiments go, it was hardly scientific. So why did Nine gloss over this major problem? The network did not give us an answer. But a spokesperson told us... We make no apology for highlighting the point of this important experiment, the need for neighbours and friends and all the community to remain vigilant and be prepared to take action to help those suffering domestic abuse. Well, yes, it is vital the community report domestic violence and we're not trying to undermine an important campaign. But ACA and the police lashed the neighbours for turning a deaf ear when, as you can see, it was not quite that simple. You can read Nine's full statement on our website. And finally, to Sky News, which has been doing its own media watching. Today, I want to tell you about the most important Donald Trump story you've probably never heard. Actually, it's not so much a story as a correction to a story. That is James Morrow from Sky's Outsiders winding up for a scathing attack on the left-wing media in Australia and America and on the Washington Post in particular for wrongly verbaling Donald Trump in this story on 9th of January. President Trump urged Georgia's lead elections investigator to find the fraud in a lengthy December phone call, saying the official would be a national hero. Now, there's no dispute that Trump made that call to election investigator Francis Watson two days before Christmas when he was trying to overturn Joe Biden's win. But the Washington Post's account of what Trump said relied entirely and unwisely on one... ...individual familiar with the call who spoke on the condition of anonymity. And recently, when a tape of the call was released under FOI, the Washington Post had to eat a large and well-deserved slice of humble pie. Correction. Trump did not tell the investigator to find the fraud or say she would be a national hero if she did so. Instead, Trump urged the investigator to scrutinise ballots in Fulton County, Georgia, asserting she would find dishonesty there. He also told her that she had the most important job in the country right now. So it was a bad mistake and a perfect opportunity for Sky's James Morrow, who's also political editor of the Daily Telegraph, to score an easy hit. So what did he do? Well, believe it or not, he savaged the wrong story. Remember a story that ran on January 3rd in the Washington Post and was beamed around the world? Yes, but hold on, that's not the one, because it's an earlier story about a different Trump phone call to a senior Georgia politician, Brad Raffensperger, which the Post reported correctly. Only no one at Sky told James of his mistake, so on he blithely went. President Trump on the phone call urged Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State, to find enough votes to overturn his defeat in this extraordinary one-hour phone call Saturday that legal scholars described as a flagrant abuse of power and a potential criminal act. For close to five minutes, Morrow raged about the Post's claims and about groupthink and mass hysteria in the unchecked mainstream media, like the Nine Papers and the ABC. And he then asked... So why am I telling you all this? Well, simply because the original Washington Post story, which sparked so much outrage around the world, was not true. But because it fit everyone in the left-leaning media's preconceived ideas about Trump, it spread like wildfire. Only problem is, the story Morrow highlighted from 3rd of January was true and is true, and the Washington Post had a tape of that call from the very beginning. Whoops. 
count that one as a near miss. And better luck next time. We look forward to tomorrow correcting his correction, which also spread like wildfire and has been viewed on YouTube by more than 1.8 million people. That's all from us tonight. There's more on our website where you can stream or download the programme. And don't forget, Media Bytes on social media and iView. No show Easter Monday. We'll see you the following week. Goodbye. <laughs>